Well, what have we here? Hi there, this is Jamal in the Cooper Road Mini engine assembly room. And today we've got a very interesting opportunity here because we've gathered up most of the castings of note for all the uh, mini uh, cylinder heads. Um, obviously mostly 1275s, if is, is, you followed me at all, you know that we build pretty much performance, street performance and race engines. We're not against restorations, but uh, we do like to improve things. And this chance here came about because I'm putting together um, our latest Sprite engine. This one's using an MED steel crank, the longer connecting rods, the six inch rods, with the uh, correspondingly shorter pin height pistons. Um, I like using longer stroke, or rather uh, longer rods on the long stroke engines, a number of advantages there we've gone into before. And right here in front of us is the brand new Mini Spares aluminum head, the race version. Um, we got one of the early versions of these to replace the very, very good Pierce head I built for this race engine a couple of years back. Uh, unfortunately, we had a, a trackside incident where some work uh, by uh, somebody trying to help out, uh, something fell down the carbs and split itself into uh, these two ports and pummeled the chambers. And really, the head was still working, um, but with the bits and pieces flying around, it kind of took out the material. Let's bring some extra light here. In between the seats with our enormous valves. So that's a bit of a compromise there, and these are the availability of those isn't very good. And uh, our setup here, which included special Longman valves, a tenth of an inch longer to make our springs and pressures and rocker geometry work, um, all in all, a fantastic head. But what we have here is a chance to show some of the differences, improvements, if you will, with this brand new mini spares head. And we have all of these here just for interest and comparison. Um, let's just take a quick look. We have a small bore, one of the 12G 295s, in an unmodified state. These were the best early castings found on the more performance-oriented Cooper models. And you can see this has the stock 1-inch exhausts, 1.1-inch intakes. But there's quite a bit of room between valves. So I had one of these... <clears throat> On our own Cooper that we had uh, when we lived in Wales, um, that had about inch and a quarter intakes, say 106 if I remember, maybe 109 even exhaust. I mean, it was built to the max for a small engine. This is an unmodified one uh, that I got from our good friend uh, Gary Nichols. I was on his engine, and a uh, very weird deal there. Someone put that on a 1275. I've never seen anyone go that way. They just didn't realize the, the huge differences. I mean, the chambers are way different. The valves are tiny. The cylinder spacing is terrible for a 1275. But in any event, uh, the other ones here, 12G940, one of the later ones. I like finding these if I can for building the race heads. This is going to be a core probably to do one of our uh, Series 6, the, the 6 millimeter valve variety that MED does. And you can see no water fitting here. I just find the early ones tedious. They're pretty well seized. It's a weird thread. Yeah, you can make it 3 8 pipe, but it's just one more risk you can avoid. And the later ones generally haven't been hacked on as much. This is full thickness. Um, we like, we don't want to get ones that have been machined away because when I do my flat top pistons, I like bigger combustion chambers. I don't like to have a tiny combustion chamber here um, and result in a closeness valve to piston and such. So we like to have about 24 cc chambers. And if you get one of these heads that's been hacked on, uh, a lot of times you can't do it. This is the one where they move the exhaust valve over with a special guide uh, to create a much bigger intake. And that's what Mini Spares has done with this really nice looking aluminum head. Uh, when I was at Mini Mania, we had a chance to test these. We did some flow testing. We got a bunch of performance heads from different people. And this thing on the intake side outflowed everything right out of the box. So pretty impressive job. And there are some subtle improvements over, you know, this has been available, geez, maybe nearly 30 years, 25 years anyway, these Pierce heads. I really like them. I've been able to build fantastic ones. Our own Cooper S has one of these that I installed big valves. We can see here the closeness of the valves. These are 1.475 intakes, 1.22 exhausts. 
Mini spares a little bit more conservative. These are look, look to be about 1.45. Uh, you can see a bit more space between the valves. And in fact, what they have done is, is build upon what Pierce did uh, with these. If you measure the 12G940, here we've got a 12G1316, the so-called smog heads. And these are, these are okay for use in racing, but you only find them in North America where we had the smog pump blight laid upon us. But um, the point here um, is that with the aluminum heads, they increase the spacing between the valves. You have to have some ability to make these durable enough when you put seats in. Uh, the cast iron heads originally never designed with spacing to allow seats. So you're, you're up against it going for big valves. Um, and an aluminum head, they're almost touching. Where's your seats? This material is not uh, the type that you don't need seats in. So mini spares took, what Pierce did is they went 50 thousandths greater on the valve spacing between the, uh, the, the intake and exhaust center lines. The new mini spares head goes a little bit further, 60 thousandths, so another 10 thousandths, and then it looks like they're a little bit more conservative with the valve sizes, but that gives some durability to the seats and some nice sized combustion chambers. Um, they finish it off here very nicely. Uh, performance springs, I believe these are the 520, the 526s, the, um, not the crazy, uh, the ones we ended up using over here, required longer valves for the seat pressure. Uh, but these end up really nice, um, 8,000 RPM uh, type springs with titanium caps, very nicely set up. Just real quick, this is getting long, but a lot of good info here. One of the improvements, very subtle, the pushrod hole sizes and the pierce heads while they don't install a sleeve like the cast iron guys do, you know, the aftermarket when they make these enormous, is they have to install a sleeve here, otherwise you pretty quickly cut into the pushrod hole. So the pierce head just has the holes about what look like sleeves, but it's just machined holes. Mini spares here, they, they kind of realize the, the difficulty of draining the oil out of the top end on these things. So you see the intake has the smaller hole, same over here, but on the exhaust, they allowed a huge pushrod hole, and that's really going to help get oil out of the top end. Uh, the exhaust pushrods don't interfere with a nice port, so you find that only on the intakes are they the restricted size at all. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty happy to see that they thought of this. Let's take a look at the top real quick. Again, on the aluminum head, they've done away with the bypass hose. Most of the water pumps, you can, you can figure a nice way around that now. One less thing to fail. Similar to the Pierce, they bring the oil up rather than having bores through the head. Uh, they bring it up the head stud into the bottom of the rocker uh, assembly. But let's take a quick look here. Oh, one more thing while we're on the underside. Spark plugs. They retain the use of the larger plugs on the newer heads. One of the uh, things about the Pierce heads is, oh, the plugs are shrouded. And, you know, they're smaller plugs. They were using the metric uh, 10 millimeter ones, I think. Not the tiny eights that you see on the, uh, what are the seven port heads? But still, on subsequent heads, the one I built for the Moke, I did a lot of work opening up this spark plug area here to unshroud the plug, to get rid of these sharp edges of thread. Um, the one I built for the Super Moke turned out fantastic, and I actually spec these very valves for that Pierce head before these were available. And I'll tell you what, that Moke runs fantastic. Uh, you put a video up of a short test drive that we did. But uh, what a great running engine that turned out to be. So looking at all the little improvements here, um, again, one or two more little subtle things. On the top ends of these aluminum heads, sometimes it's messy when you pull the valve cover. Um, these sort of flood the oil and the way the engine leans, you just, it doesn't drain out enough. You pull the valve cover and boop, oil comes down the front of your engine over the plugs and such. So they've done a little bit of work here in the casting, and you can see these deeper drain back holes. Um, yes, they go into the intake push rods, but that's the way the casting is. Um, at least they actually have a provision for it. We're here like, you know, a little groove was cut um, to allow some oil to drain from the, uh, the spring side back down into the push rod holes. These have sort of allowed a nice deep channel, so that ought to help. Um, get the oil back down, and also when you go to pull the valve cover, yeah, it's not a huge thing, but it's kind of maddening where no matter how long the engine sits, 
the tilt of it, it there's a puddle of oil up here. Um, this has a much lower drain. That ought to be, you know, you park the thing for a few minutes, you can pull the valve cover without making a giant mess. So good thinking, well done. It looks like it uses the conventional uh, temperature sending unit. Um, and so all in all, happy to see the improvements. Uh, we're confident this is going to be a great running engine. And it'll be a backup to the one that we're working on now, the straight rod 1380 race engine using the brand new MED straight rod setup, six inch rods. Uh, the so-called five main bearing crank. We'll see how that one goes together. But an opportunity here to sew a bunch of neat stuff in one place. Thought we'd take it.